years ago, the different clans of the Asante Kingdom of Ghana were constantly feuding with one another. The feuds led to many wars, which caused loss of life and mass destruction. Osei Tutu I, one of the clan heads, held a meeting with all of the other clan heads and proposed that they all come together and choose a leader under whom all the clan chiefs would unite. This chosen leader would have power over the rest of the chiefs who would submit to his authority. The work of this leader would be to settle disputes among the various clans and instill peace in the kingdom. Although most of the clan heads welcomed Osei Tutu's idea, a new problem arose. All of the chiefs fancied the position for themselves and there was no consensus on who this ruler should be. The power struggle for the position of paramount chief was so intense that Okonfuanoche, who was the then priest of the Ashanti kingdom, had to step in. In those days, traditional priests held a lot of power as they were considered mouthpieces of the gods. Priests like Konfo and Noche were greatly revered by all because of their exceptional powers. Konfo and Noche met with all the chiefs and promised them that he would consult the oracles for them to select a leader for the people. When asked how the people would know the God's chosen one, Konfo and Noche promised that the process would be as transparent as possible. He went ahead to explain that he would petition the gods to send down a golden stool from the clouds to rest on the laps of the chosen leader. He also demanded that everyone should pour libations and offer sacrifices to their respective gods while they wait for the fateful day. On the D-Day, clan heads, natives including adults and children and people from far and near gathered at the large community ground to witness the ceremony. People dressed up for the occasion and adorned themselves with exquisite traditional and locally designed ornaments and garments in anticipation. It is said that all of a sudden the rumbling of thunder was heard and the whole place became still. Okonfuanoche himself made a grand entry by appearing from thin air at the center of the gathering. Everyone was speechless and just watched him in awe. He then motioned for the drummers to beat their drums. After that, he announced in an audible voice the purpose of the gathering. Everyone was quiet. As people watched in awe, the priest started a series of chanting incantations, began beating his drum and dancing aggressively to the beat. Suddenly, the rumblings of thunder started again and the clouds parted. His incantation, drumming and dancing also increased with the temple. All necks were now fixated upwards as they gazed at the clouds. Hairs stood on the bodies of these onlookers in amazement. And then arrived the moment everyone had been impatiently waiting for. The clouds parted and the golden stool was seen descending downwards. This miraculous golden stool was accompanied by a cloud of white dust. With everyone's gaze still fixated onto the golden stool, it fell down and rested on the laps of Osei Tutu I. All movement ceased immediately. The thunder had stopped rumbling and the weather was back to normal. Hands began to clap and mouths started screaming in joy and hooting cheers. What a feat a noche had promised and he delivered. In plain sight, the gods had chosen Osei Tutu as their overall leader. Okonfuanoche performed the necessary rites and Osei Tutu was installed as the first king of the Ashanti kingdom. And so it was that with the instalment of a new king, civil disputes among the Ashanti ceased and the kingdom was ushered into an era of peace. The golden stool is seen as a gift from the gods which signifies the unity, togetherness and strength of the people of the Ashanti kingdom.
We have come to the end of today's video. Which African folklore would you like us to cover next? Don't forget to like, comment and share our videos. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.